Welcome to your favorite YouTube channel, Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. Jim, with the power of internet technology, man, we're bringing the, uh, the international Kayfabe session today. We have uh, Uncle Jeff Darrow coming from uh, rural France, and we have our brother from another mother, David Cho, joining us from, from, from Glitter Town. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, guys. Yo, Dave, what yeah, you got man. there? Oh, this is my Jeff Darrow toy from Meltdown. Uh, <laughs> Which I think bankrupted the store. <laughs> <laughs> Shouts to Gaston. That, that was a heck of a dude, man. Uh, yeah. Gaston at, at Meltdown Comics he brought me out there once for the Hip Hop Family Tree stuff, and uh, told me great stories about you know hooking uh, hooking uh, Kanye West up with Simon Bisley. Yeah, that's an odd pairing. Hollywood baby. Wow. I mean, just just to start, yeah, like Meltdown was this amazing comic book store I, I the rumor was that leonardo dicaprio was like part owner in it but it was it was comically like a parody of what a uh, hollywood comic book store would be like you know it's like yeah like you said pairing up kanye with turtles like celebrities like all kinds of crazy deals happening inside meltdown there was a comedy club in the back that's I right mean, Ner nerdist podcast at the at the end there and right. then just very opulent design infrastructure, the big old uh, fluorescent lights designed by Dan Clowles and stuff, the light tubes and shit. Yeah. Well, he, he brought he brought Leonardo down to San Diego one year, so uh, that could be true. Is yeah, that... he brought him. He like Leonardo's a huge art collector. Did he get any of your stuff? Yeah. <laughs> I've told this story. You guys have heard this story, right? Maybe uh, Dave did it. Oh. No, I, I've I've heard this. I've heard that story, but like I want to know like more details. <laughs> like which pe like which pieces? I, I, well, the one the one thing it was uh, I sold him. Uh, I I had some of the Shaolin Cowboy, the first issue artwork, and I had that big spread of the uh, the uh, dinosaur with the city on his back, mm -hmm. and he wanted to buy it. <laughs> I sold it to him, but I didn't have a copy of it. And so I had to re-ink the thing. And that was <laughs> Do you find this this scenario not just with celebrities, but just with people that are buying expensive art, that they they buy your art because they obviously love your art, but do they want to be friends with you after that? Like, do they want to kick it with you? And you know, he seemed kind of. Well, he was. This is right after um, Titanic, so he was probably still like nineteen or twenty. So he's really kind of gosh wow because I was kind of joking with him and. And I, I think he was a little taken aback a few times because I didn't recognize him. Because, you know, I never expect to see somebody there that, uh, you, you know, well, it's that thing or, God, you look just like Cary Grant. That's because I am Cary Grant. Oh, jeez. You know, I, I, I remember his, oh, it is him. Is that mm. that Gaston was goofing on me? So you were never a big fan of Growing Pains with Alan Thicke and uh, Kirk Cameron? <laughs> Fortunately, I was out of the States when that show <laughs> was going. There's a lot of that stuff. that The French are really big on um, different strokes. That was a huge show. Where that and, and uh, She's the Boss. Or he's the Boss. Who's, who's, the, who's boss? the Boss? Who's the Boss? <laughs> who's the boss? <laughs> oh, God, they loved that show. You know, All, and nothing, nothing that was like Seinfeld didn't make it. Anything that had any kind of intelligence to it, it didn't. But if it was like a real generic sitcom, it did well, and that thing, that thing was just, I can't think of it. And, and it had a song too. Sometimes they do a actual songs for, uh, for, for, for American shows. Starsky and Hutch had a, sh had a song. The Starsky and Hutch, the dun 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 dun, the Starsky and Hutch. The Sunday Bone, and they're, they're good friends. And it's just, oh God, it was goofy. Oh, they changed, they changed it to a, like a French uh, yeah, song. Yeah, it was like a French. They wrote, oh, wow. a, wrote a song specially for it, and uh, it was. Uh, and that show, it would run consistently. It never went off the air. It was on on Sundays. It run one episode. And it was on so long that the, the fashions had come back. <laughs> I always like the, um, have a lot of friends, like when I went to art school from, from uh, different countries, and I would always ask them about the translated titles of uh, my favorite shows or whatever. And I, I remember in, in, Madrid, Spain, that kind of Spanish. Uh, Knight Rider, the title translated to Fantastic Car. Jeez. <laughs> well, Huggy Bear was called Huggy Bear, the the gentle pimp, basically. Wow. Whoa. 
<laughs> there's no burying the lead there. Yeah, there's, you know. Yeah. So, so how long has it been since your exodus to France? Like, how many years has it been? This time, uh, I moved here in the end of 2018, so it's been about, been about five years. And it, and there's no like regrets, or I'm, you know, you're you're happy to. Probably my wife more than me. I mean, she was crying on the plane when we left Chicago. And I was like, oh. da, 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 da. <laughs> out of here so long. Uh, but she, yeah, but no, 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 not at all. I mean, I, you know, because I realize I don't, as you well know, David, I don't, I just draw, I don't do anything. I mean, yeah, I'm you do that. I'm to live in France because I'm not a, a foodie and I'm not a drinker. And well, yeah, I, fo I followed you out to Europe, man. I, I mean, I moved to Portugal and I'd never, I thought that I was never going to come back home. But then because of visa issues, like I have to, I'm still figuring that out. Um, so until I'm permanently out there uh, with you, I I cried on the plane right back home. I was like, <laughs> I don't want to come back, you know. When I came here in 1983, the first time, 83, and I I lived here several years without. I lived here illegally. Mm. You know, I was you know a white guy, and uh, I mean, at, at the time that I moved here, there was also a lot of terrorist attacks going on. It was like crazy. There was like a bomb nearly every other day. And wow. if you went into this, if you went into the subway, you know, I can well, and they would control people that asked to see their passports never got stopped. The only people that were stopping were people of color. And if mm. you were with someone of color, then they would ask you. But other than that, I never, you know, I even had a bank account here, which is legally I should not have had because I, I didn't have any legal status. I feel like the French would be sticklers in, in the in the same way or, or maybe even more than the Americans would be when it comes to illegal aliens. And like they uh, definitely the times I've been out there, they were pretty rigid, like, oh, you must learn French. You must learn French. Oh, really? oh yeah. Wow. And gay I Paris. You, when I would go through the, the you know, the uh, with my passport, it would just like, you know, they wouldn't even look just go go and it was mostly the americans who want to get their passports stamped and they never stamped my passport so they had no idea when i came or when i left and mostly these, you know the kids well i'm, I'm gonna let people know it's in paris and they'd have to ask and you'd see the guy they go, <laughs> <laughs> jeff I mean, is your wife french yeah that's why it was easy for me to you know eventually get like a green card i mean i felt so bad because i remember in there applying for it and there were a lot of uh, African uh, nationals that were trying to get it, and like they were not pleasant to those people at all. I remember helping a few of them fill out the forms because it was just like, and me, it's like, you know, it was like, nah, I had it within months. And do, you, do you have like a arts community out there? Like, do you hang out with Chrome and like, or it's just, no, I don't, I, I know he's in this is all this is all bit before I, I even met you. I, I was like, you have the art style of someone who has like no social life like I, I just I, I don't understand how you would right like if you're drawing at that level and and for me personally I've lived all over the world I've lived in different countries and cities and continents and it always like if I live in China it definitely I can look at my art and go that's when I lived in China because it, it, there's a direct influence on my art or if I live in Africa or Israel but it seems like no matter where you live <laughs> your art's pretty consistent no matter like does living in france affect your art at all no uh, and I, I, actually when i was first here in the 80s i would put like french jokes in there a little mm. draw like signs i don't do that anymore because most because i mean they, they didn't seem to get them anyway but uh not really i mean yeah not yeah stylistically right. though it doesn't it looks pretty and that's 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 what i just wanted to say i i just I, I want to just say, I've told these guys a million times how grateful I am for their, what the service that they provide, the show that they do, and just, you know, Jeff Darrow, Jeff with a G, Jeff with one F, when he's on the scene, like, I can't even describe what it was like being introduced to your art in the way that it, 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 was, it was so violent. It was so violent in such a beautiful way, and <laughs> and so I, you know, it's it's only recent that I, I've been talking to you, and I, and I'm so grateful for our friendship, and I love every time we talk. Friendship, but wow. but, but 
<laughs> well, before before meeting you, it's all just I wonder what this guy's like. It's all conjecture. It's all uh, fantasy. I'm like, oh, wh who is this guy? Who is this Jeff Darrow who spells his name like this? Who is this guy that draws every particle of gra glass breaking and 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 the the overlying theme? Sorry, you're not asking for analysis of your artwork, but like the overlying theme of all the artwork that I've read of yours over the years is so violent it's so violent and i go there's no way that someone who draws this much violence hasn't experienced <laughs> some like intense violence in their life and then and then uh i bought some original art from you not from you but i bought it online and then it came in the mail and like a lot of my suspicions were confirmed when i saw the how hard this fucker pushes down on the pencil i'm like right. it's like you're making trenches in the i'm like so okay. you got some not, not only not only is he drawing the most detailed drawings I've ever seen he's he's and, and 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 so I'm going into your head I haven't met you yet and I go for for who, whoever this guy is out there that's drawing at this fucking high level repeatedly not for years but for decades without any like it's still if you look at something you did today like there's so many artists you look at something they've they do today and you go oh, it's not as good as what they did 10 years ago 20 years ago so you're you're still drawing at the same detail level and and how hard you're pushing with the pencil and the subject matter even though it's beautiful how you're depicting death i'm like this guy must think about how many violent ways you can dismember someone or cut their head off or make them explode and there's like so many variations of death 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 violence but depicted so beautifully and I'm like, this guy's fucked up. I got to meet him. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're, you're, you're right. <laughs> yeah, and then I meet you, and I'm sorry if I was, like, intrusive with the questions, but I was like, oh, no, there's no way, right? No. There's no way There's no way that you're drawing like this without experiencing severe trauma in your childhood, right? And then you told me some pretty crazy shit, and, um, like, if you don't mind me sharing... I mean, we don't I have to. What, I don't remember what I told you. Well, you I told so, me. Something, I, I was like, so happy that you were there. Well, I was, I was, that's I was one of like, that's one of my like meeting Jim and Ed. I was always afraid that they're gonna think I'm such a an asshole or a loser. And uh, I was like, well, you know, they're gonna this guy's about as cool as a, <laughs> a turd on a dinner plate. <laughs> no, I, I I feel like you're whatever whatever you want to say. I, I mean, most almost everything you've ever put down as a comic could be a wordless comic. You know, you want to put in words, fine, but like they could all just exist as wordless comics. And, and you're because so, you say all of it in your art. And I'm like, this guy's probably a pervert like me, um, like we all are, like all good artists are. <laughs> and perverted in the fact that like you just observe, you observe everything, you see everything. Um, and even a lot of it is political in a way without being it's. It's just your sarcasm and your wit hidden in there. And, uh, yeah, you told me this. You said you were always tall and kind of like a little bit goofy, nerdy guy. And, and a kid, like a kid just like violently would kick you in your stomach. And yeah. uh, and uh, I, I was so sad to hear that story. But then in that moment, I go, okay, this is like, because it, it's the the thing with your art is, it doesn't look, you know, and I'm saying this as a compliment, it doesn't look human, right? It doesn't, it's like, how is, like, it, it, to this day, when I when I pick up hard-boiled or, or anything you do, even the shallow, even anything, it's, it's just completely blown away, you know? I'm like, wow. It, it, it's not, I don't know if it's a good comparison, but, like, growing up in the time that I was growing up, when uh, NW came, NWA came out straight out of Compton, and and it was the way I felt listening to straight out of Compton, like just what they were saying, I was it was so insane. I was like, man, I live in LA and I don't know this this world. And then you came out with your art right after you know with Hard Boiled. It it, it was like seeing MC Escher for the first time or Norman Walkwell or any 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 or Mobius like. Anyone that creates something where you're like, I didn't even know you could do that, right? And then so you make this art, and it's just holy shit, and it's so impactful. And I'm reading this, and it says written by Frank Miller. I'm like, what? What did he write? It's just, you're doing all the heavy lifting. 
But it just well, it he, just he felt like you came out of. Voice. I had never heard of you, and, it, it, and I was a kid at the time, so it just felt like you came out of nowhere, and it was like just straight out of wherever you came from, and it was so in your face and just pouring over the pages. It was so violent, so beautiful, and uh, so expressive, you know, in a way. Even though it's so technical, it's so expressive. Like, yeah, especially the Shaolin Cowboy stuff is like the, even the way the blood how you p portray the blood it's like a ballet like a hong kong like action film like a king opera kind of when, whenever hard-boiled came out and we discovered that artwork for for the first time right then and there it felt like you're not gonna not gonna get too much of this as a, as a reader like you, you can't humanly possibly draw that many comic pages if you're if you've got this level of craft in 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 the work and and then you know there's the dalliance with hollywood of course with with the matrix stuff and that's the logical progression for almost everybody who gets in the comics and then and then has has that very singular style you know that you get snapped up because why not man money talks and 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 it's available out there but the fact, yeah <laughs> but then the <laughs> fact that you come back to uh to comics and, and and you sort of stay here you know i know you turned down some 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 big work and the 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 coolest part about being in comics is every now and then getting a little sneak peek at, at what's what's to come and stuff and you know i won't say anything jeff but you slid me a couple of pages and continuous progression continuous mm -hmm. growth tremendous inspiration that's that's one of the biggest things that i get out of uh you know, getting to, getting to know you a little bit, Jeff. It's just like always pushing yourself, man, and it's a, it's a great lesson. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is, let's all get naked, guys. <laughs> let's all get. <laughs> well, it's also it's a, it's also a great lesson in mental illness because I I, I experience <laughs> I experience Jeff as extremely mentally ill, and not to say I I, I love you, man. You know I love you, <laughs> um, but it's just how like how. Like, how, like, you know, I think most people that would meet you in person would never go, oh, Jeff's like an angry guy because you seem like, I don't know, all the times I've hung out with you, you seem. But the uh, the intensity of your art and the subject matter of your art is so angry and so violent and such a, like, now that I know you better, like your commentary on just society and life it's all coming out there on the page. It's all coming out with how hard you're pushing the pencil, it's the details. And it's, I was like, man, this fucking guy's on fire. Like this guy's fucking so intense. Like, well, um, I, I think I, I, I draw so hard because um, I'll, I'll, I'll draw something. I know eventually I might want to overlap something. And if it's drawn real lightly, when I erase it, the drawing will go away. So if I have that figure and I've got it drawn really hard, then if I draw like a bird flying past his head, I can erase the head and it's still there, kind of. Mm -hmm. And then I can draw the bird in there and then does that make any yeah, sense? Yeah, but don't, wouldn't you say, like, I'm, I'm 47. I, f I feel like I'm old enough now where it doesn't even matter what someone's, te like, what someone's painting or what if you like their art or, they're not, or you don't like their art. Uh, maybe some of this is just from, a paint, from being a painter. It's like, I know how paint goes down now. Like, I know how ink goes down. I know how paint goes down, whether it's spray paint, watercolor. So just looking at the texture of the paint, the splatter, the thickness, you know, it says a lot of about the artist, of if they're shy. Like, uh, maybe I, I'm looking too into it, but I'm usually correct. When I see, like, how someone colors or how someone inks or how someone pencils, and I just check out the intensity of the line or or if they or if, if there isn't if it's just like light shading and then you meet them and they're like really soft spoken and you know i'm wrong sometimes but it, it seems like i can pick up a lot from just how the paints put down how the how the marks are put down in the mark making you know the pigments are pushed around it, wow. it says a lot about the person's personality so you might think it's because you don't want to lose the line but there's so much confidence and boldness in how you put yeah yeah there is you fucking know, you fucking know you draw better than everybody i i know i, I know you do this insecure like ah but nobody draws better than you 
Oh, whenever I, whenever, oh, whenever I want to tell someone like, here's an example of like the best you can be as like a, a, a draftsman, a penciler, I show them your stuff, you know, yeah, which, 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 which does bring us to color. Like, how do you see color? Buy our books. Keep the videos coming to you on a regular basis. Jimmy has Street Angel Deadliest Girl Alive. Street Angel Princess of Poverty. True Crime Funnies. 1986 Zine. BW Zine. Get those at his website. Hulk Grand Design. Treasury is out there. Trade paperback coming soon. I have Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus. X-Men Grand Design Trilogy. Red Room Crypto Killers comes out the end of February. Anti-Social Network. Red Room Trigger Warnings and the Switchblade Shorties comic strip coming to you online on a daily basis. Now that we're done uh, showing off our books, get them and back to the video. I used to, you know, I, I used to color most of my stuff because I, when, I, when I was going through my my Juan Baudet stage, I uh, yeah, I, I used markers all the time and I, I would sell them at I'd go to science fiction conventions and they had art shows. You could put pieces of art in the the auction, and uh, they were all, you know, you know, an ink them with God, God knows with flare pens, which, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, then I'd color them with Pantone markers, and I'd blend them. And but I know about the time I started really trying to draw comics, which was about nineteen. I mean, I always tried, but it was like, I, the beginning is like I'll do a page. Oh, it's not good enough, and I do something else and something else, and, and I don't. I did seriously draw anything until after I had met Mobius and I go, I gotta finish something because I told him I would. And he said he'd take me to Metal Herlant, you know, the French heavy metal magazine. Mm -hmm. But I actually had to do something. So and that, what what happened and that where was too much work. I thought I can't I done I, I couldn't by the time I went would go to color I'd be so bored with it. I know I'd do a really crappy job. It would be just mm -hmm. too much. It'd be like I'd well, done I, the drawing three times. I don't know if I've seen an example of anything that you've colored. So that there is one. There is one that was printed, and it was printed, and I realized this is really horrible. It's a, 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 it's on Big Guy, and there's a back cover with Rusty, and he's running, and that was me. And it's all you can tell it's a marker because you can see where the color isn't very. Uh, I gotta go find that. It's it's not very uh, uh, consistent. You get that you know that marker, that marker uh, is the. Uh, inconsistency like it's a little darker red and a little lighter and, but i would you know i would i would have the blenders and i'd blend it when it's small it would when it would be pretty small it was uh it was okay and if, and but, if, you're, if like, but you're yeah, saying you had stop had a, but you're there, saying you stopped a, coloring because you thought it wasn't good enough or i know it's too much work too oh it's too much work right yeah i, I don't know if it was good enough because I, I i used to like Ed had this magazine that in the Chicago they yeah I sent them they, pictures of it too. You guys remember man where, where Jeff dressed up like a PI had guns and shit. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah. That's it. Yeah it. and that I think the poster in that I colored, and so that was you know I, that was all done with markers. And, uh, but I mean my hot take and no disrespect I guess it's gonna sound a little disrespectful, mm -hmm. is I don't know if you've ever been okay, let me let me choose my words carefully. Uh, I, I don't I haven't seen a lot of your colored work. So, you know, I'm like, okay, Jeff's someone who definitely likes to draw in ink, but he's not really coloring his own stuff at this point. Um, I, I think Lynn Varley would be the obvious choice after, you know, if you're working with Frank, but I know she's really slow. So, okay, maybe that would take forever. But between Claude and uh, Dave Stewart, like, once again, awesome guys, awesome job. But I don't know besides like the city of fire mobius print that you put out i don't and he colored that right if i, yeah, if, yeah, I yeah. if that might have been the best like i'm saying those guys are doing a good job but i don't know if you've ever been colored correctly like i don't know if the coloring that's done on your books is the, doing justice for the level of the art that you're doing um hmm. So I, I guess I, that's very, I, I guess that's very disrespectful. <laughs> no, it's, it's a, no, it's fine. I I absolutely love what Dave. The does. Mobius shit is fucking next level. That that well, level yeah, coloring. But, yeah, but the top is, of it, I mean, it's Mobius that inked it, so it's basically, you know, it, it's it looks, it looks Mobius, you know. Right. Remember, well, Gary Groth, um, you know, he, he, <laughs> the one time the one time I met him in Paris, he kind of alluded to the fact that you know. 
I didn't really do anything on the City of Fire things. That's what he said? <laughs> well, because he said, well, you know, they had it there. And I was sitting there with Gil Kane, and, and he said, uh, he said, oh, so you did this? I said, yeah, yeah, I'd give, I'd give Gil a copy of it. And, and Gary said, yeah, well, if you worked on it, how come your name isn't on there? What? On the drawing. Because I never sign, I hardly ever sign anything unless, like, I sell something, but I never sign covers or anything. And I, I, and I said to him, well, well, maybe I did. I mean, that is, that's yeah. the best art duo, like, <clears throat> well, yeah, well, him, he was just God. Yeah. Hey, Dave, uh, did you know about that portfolio set? Like all this time, we we did a we were going through Wizards, and it was mentioned as a as a news item that that uh, Dark Horse was going to pick it up, probably in like Wizard, you know, issue one, two, three, four, five, something like that. And Jimmy and I were both fucking blown away that this existed because it's like Jeff Darrow artwork is a rare morsel. Anyhow, you feel like you have it all, and then discover that there's like another thing, and it's a collaboration with Mobius. That slipped by our radars, man. We were a little too young at that oh, time. It, it- it definitely slipped by my radar. I, I, you guys know I go to multiple comic stores on Wednesday. So I go to Secret Headquarters where the owner, Dave, he's super nice. And he, anytime he gets new shit, he lets me know. Um, so a few years ago, he goes, you know about this one? And he pulls out the portfolio and it's signed by Jeff and Mobius. And each of you guys did a drawing on it. I go, what the fuck is this? So he pulls it out. It's printed on the shittiest paper. It's like, you know. And I go, I have to have this. And he's like, well, this one's mine. I'm not selling it. And I just was like, dude, come on, come on, come on. So then I, I he finally relented, let me buy it. And I've, <clears throat> you know, just short of jerking off to it. Like, I, <laughs> I, I've looked over that thing, the colors. And I'm like, who, who did what? You know, like, who drew what? Who did this girl? Who did this monster? And it's the fact that I can't tell. And, of course, you could, the man's right here. You can answer. I it's a perfect collaboration of two guys working together and that thing is anyone who's listening right now who doesn't know what we're talking about the mobius jeff darrow city of fire print set by dark horse is probably the best drawings of sci-fi shit ever created ever and we do and we do have a video on the kayfabe channel make sure you check that out somebody just showed up to us at baltimore comic-con and and slid us copies you guys got one oh yeah yeah dude yeah, the things. There, the there's thing the, the, the French one is really nice because it's uh, and you can find that sometimes you can find it here on occasion. It's like about fifteen hundred or two thousand dollars now. It's about and the it, same price it, here too. How, how much but back the, and forth was it? It's like who did who went first? I, then, I drew it. I just drew it. I mean, we sat down and because um, <laughs> I moved, I went over there to draw a comic strip with him. Yeah based on this story that this sect that he was in was going to do. They were going to make an animated film called Internal Transfer. And they wanted to do a comic strip. And Jean said, I'll write it. And you, you can draw it and make it. And get me launched into the French comics industry. But he, he wasn't, he, he hadn't done that before, right? He wasn't. No, no. So you, I mean, you, must, have, he, you must he, have showed him something amazing to have him. Oh, no, no, he just, I never, there's something that was always mystifying to me. He always really liked what I did. I remember when I showed him that uh, that comic strip that I was going to take to Metal Herlong, he really liked it. And I don't know, he just has always been really nice to me. And I never, I, you know, I'm always, because I've been saying, you know, Jean, like, you can be really hard on artists. He's really hard on God, he's always been really nice to me. And it was all it was very yeah. Because you're the fucking man, dude. That's why. No, and, and, so, and so is he. You know, like like uh, if you're gonna yeah. take some hard criticism for somebody, you yeah, take it from Mobius, like, and and then you listen to what the fuck he says, yeah. and maybe adjust your your skills. Game recognized game. He fucking knew what was coming. He well, knew. He fucking I, knew. What we was. just, you know, because I mean, I never, you know, because I, mean, I met him and we went out to, to dinner and you know, with some friends and. I never told him what I did. And he said, what do you do? And I said, oh, I'm going to go, can I see it? And because I never wanted to be one of those guys like, I remember Jack Kirby, I met Jack Kirby at the New York Comic Convention. He said, what do you do to draw comedy? He goes, bring him up to my room and show me what you're doing. I, go, God, I didn't go because I was just too, I just, you know, I thought it was so sweet of him. But, you know, he's at a convention and I don't want to disturb Wait, so you didn't, you didn't show Jack Kirby your shit? No, no. No. But I'd, I'd be very curious what it was that you showed Mobius that 
you know. Well, it was just that. St well, I was I was trying to draw what became. You showed him your penis, huh? You showed him your penis. Yeah, and he was you know, not impressed at all but that no one is, <clears throat> or should they be? I mean, and at the time, I, I didn't have a micro uh, magnifying glass. So even, oh, come on. It's been there somewhere, you know. But I was. I was well, what was it that you showed him well, that you know, he you know, took that saw, kind of interest? It was really funny. This is really funny. Because he was working on Tron. And you know how those vehicles looked in Tron? They're all very geometric and yeah. blocked out. And I'm trying to figure out perspective. I'm working in Hanna-Barbera. And I'm trying to figure out perspective. And, uh, uh, and so I had this really clunky, blocky spaceship that I was trying to draw. I mean, it was the crudest, stupidest looking thing. And he thought I was drawing computer graphics. He goes, oh, maybe I can. You, you, well, you're really good at doing, doing computer graphic science fiction maybe i can get you on tron and i he didn't realize it was actually you know, it wasn't meant to be that i was really just trying to figure out how to draw draw stuff mm. uh, that that was the first thing and then you know, i did next time was when i had the strip and he came in and i showed it to him i mean what was his reaction when you brought those drawings in oh i, I hate saying this kind of stuff. he yeah, i, I showed I showed it to him and he was, I think he was doing some work for Lucas and I, uh, George Lucas, I said, wow. And, and um, he said, wow, you're working, you're working on this. And he goes, wow, that guy's genius. Oh, you're the genius. Forget about it. This is genius. So, oh, nice. And I thought, oh, he's just being nice. No, so, dude, you know. he recognized, he saw it. But he was just always really, really nice to me. I mean, I know, like, you know, when I went over there for his funeral, uh, I never, I think I always had people after him. I never wanted to bother him. And, uh, so you say that all the time, but you're never bothering anybody. Well, <laughs> he, that's what his wife said, you know, she said, John and I would talk about you. We always ask why you didn't call. And I said, because I didn't want to bother him. Because people are always after him. And he'd be one of those guys that goes, it's Jeff. He said, no, but he liked, he liked you. So. I think about how many relationships like that I because you saying that definitely resonates with me because I'll I'll meet someone that I respect and then I'll just be like what I'm not going to bother them you know and then I I'm friends with lots of artists and usually it's me calling them and they always say the same thing that you just said right now they go I, you're busy Dave I don't want to bother you I'm like I'm not that busy and then if I am busy who would I rather take a call from? Some douchebag or an artist that I respect that's my friend, you know? But yeah, I think that's a artist thing or a creative thing where... Well, I'll call, I'll call you or I'll call, call Jim and Ed and I'm always like, my God, I get off the phone and think, my God, I'm like, God damn it. I gotta get, you know, listen more to my caller ID. because Never, like, man. I, I cherish that stuff. And, absolutely. And, and I totally get, I totally get both sides of the equation because like when, you, when you're with somebody like a Mobius, I'm sure, like I felt it with Harvey Picar where at the end of his life and stuff, there were these fucking weird hangers on people, man, that were like trying to steer him in directions and shit. And, and just the grossest, cause now there's that Hollywood element involved in his life. And he's a rust belt blue collar dude with these fucking weird Hollywood dudes. And then, you know, a fucking guy that carries a gun is with him all the time. Like just all these weird characters. And the last thing you want to be is like, to have that person that you respect think that you might be one, like one of those guys too. Cause like, I always thought that maybe, um, well, I just didn't know if, if, if they were, if they could see from your vantage point that these people were like gross or, or whatever. And over time there've been times where I was like involved with people who were definitely huge kiss asses who clearly were like looking for something from me. And I'm like, well, it is pretty apparent, but <laughs> you know, the, the artists have like, you know, maybe somebody in Mobius's position who, who was spending so much time drawing sort of liked the feeling a little bit of the hanger on people. It was like a, a sort of good feeling in a way. But like, you just got to you got to know, got to know when to hold them and when to fold them, man, because yeah. they could they could they could run you through the ringer. And who wants to be mistaken for one of those? Like that would fucking suck a dick. I just don't get the sense that Jeff calling Mobius, he'd be like, oh, fuck not at all. <laughs> like this fucking guy again. Yeah, not at all. How did I you... mean, I'm, su I'm surprised he didn't try to get you into a sex call. Convert you into, <laughs> you know, is, is that. I, you know, I, I was, I, 
I, I, I'm just so, so timid. I mean, there were, there were times even, you know, like I'd go out with Liberator and there were things that could have happened or not. You know, I'm just totally oblivious to stuff. And, you talk about what groupies? Yeah, well, he was that. He was just such a magnet, that guy Liberator. So, and I'd go to him and go to these like exclusive clubs that they'd let him into. You know, he had to know somebody to get in. And there's a place called La Bandouche, which is a, like a, an old bathhouse. And there are always like porn stars in there and, and the movie stars and rock stars. And he knew everybody. He was that guy, like, used to be every night somebody knew he was one of those guys that i uh, told this word i think that the guy the fact that he never got aids is just amazing and he, <laughs> and, he, and he never wanted to get tested he never well i feel like i have aids after i read his comic books i mean <laughs> when i read the rank stuff and i'm like this the, i mean the art is just unbelievable yeah. but like just i don't know if you could put those comics out today especially. Well, no i know that the, the whole lubna thing like when they put it in the u.s they said she was 18. yeah they had to bump her age up a couple yeah but in france i think she was 15. I think. but yeah so. i definitely feel like i have an std after i run it, f yeah. finished reading his comic books <laughs> but you speak the, everything you're speaking of on is if if like, I don't want to bother you. I don't want to call this guy. I don't want to be a nuisance. I'm out with this guy, but I'm just like, I'm oblivious to what's happening. Some of that I've heard you say, and you know, sorry if I'm talking out of turn. I've heard you say about your own art and like a, like a self-defeating negative talk. And I, I really, I, I'm curious, um, I, I, once again, I got to think about the best way to say this to you. Um, the art has never diminished, right? The art is so detailed. It's so powerful. But it's like eating cheesecake, like, for for the whole meal. It's like, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit, and the law of diminishing returns. When there's that much detail on every page, it, it almost at some point is like, you know, getting cavities. It's so, so much sweetness. And and I know from hearing you talk this way, maybe because um, even your version of drawing minimal is still like most people's like in, most crazy just drawing ever is if there was uh, if you'd allow yourself or give yourself permission, because I, I when I hear the negative self talk of like, I have to draw every detail in this fire escape in this background. And if I don't, people are going to say, oh, he just phoned it in. And it's like, well, first of all. If anyone's allowed to phone it in at this point, <laughs> it would be you. And two, just like, um, just to, uh, I'm, not, I'm not asking you to become a minimalist artist or anything. I'm just saying if there's moments to breathe more, because your, your version of breathing is still so intense. And maybe people are like, shut the fuck up, Dave. Like, that's not what we, that's not what we come to Jeff Darrow comics for. When we go in, we want to get immersed into people, this. Yeah, but... Just say, dude, well, yeah. dude, you've you've gone to this point. You're respected. You're loved. You have nothing left to prove to anybody. And for for me, uh, I, I guess I'll just speak for myself. When I get a new Shaolin cowboy, it's just you don't have to impress me anymore. I'm impressed. Like you just, I, I told these guys um, uh, when I was the one that we were supposed to do, and and it didn't work out. Like that the afternoon that i went to go visit you and your daughter and we were just drawing like stupid shit like left-handed right-handed non-dominant hand like blindfolded all the dumb, dumb stuff it's like that drawing you did of a dinosaur like all this stuff like it's my most cherished stuff i have you know your art that is super hyper detailed i have your shirts i have all i have i have i have the toys i have everything but just because that is they'll there won't ever be anything that happens to you that takes that away from you like you drawing with your big toe is still going to be better than anyone you know so all your whatever shitty drawings you did in that sketchbook that day with me are my most cherished because it was you out of your comfort zone it went from control technique to just pure expression and um as a fan, as your friend, I would just love to see uh, you give yourself permission to be like, hey, 
I want to try something that I've never tried before that people might be like, oh, Jeff's lost it or he sucks. But who cares? Like just well, if that's in, if that's something that you would like to do, if you're like, no, I'm I'm going to stay in my lane, then that's that's fine. But I just. Um, I, well, I always think that uh, the, the, the insane pages, I guess, would be so much more impactful for me if there was a if it wasn't on every page. Right. If it's on every page, it's like, you know, it's holy shit. It's like an explosion for my orgasm for my eyeballs. And it's like, mm, mm. and then it's like, oh, shit. Like, you know, yeah, I, I, well. you could tell me to shut the fuck up. Also. <laughs> well, no, no, I don't know. I, I know I, I'm, I'm right. I, I did something and I, I showed it to my wife and daughter. What if I, you know, I've got all this going on. What if on the next page is just this? That that yeah. be okay, and uh, it's, yeah, yeah, and I, I did it, and it's you know I don't it's still. <laughs> yeah, how did that feel? How did that feel to do that? Uh, the thing is, is I did it. It's I don't know if I sent maybe I sent it. If I showed you guys this one, but it's just a double page spread, and the top tier of it is just the character's face, really big with his hands, but it's still. Fairly. But then below it, on, there's, to fill up the two pages on either side, there's, I think there's 32 panels on each page. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one that you it's sent like, me. It's like, it's like okay. I, I did it, no. and then like I got to go right back to it. <laughs> like, I gotta... But I still thought of that as being simple, because the little, little drawings are fairly sim they're simple to me. You know what I'd and, love to yeah, see? But, I'd love to see you do watercolors i would love to see you do I, I i'd love to see you do something like an oil painting or watercolors or something where there is no 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 i hated painting when i was a kid because i i, I remember i was i think it was in first grade or kindergarten but i, but I remember they'd have drawing because i went to catholic school and they didn't have art generally you know like once a month Mm -hmm. And and so this Saturday class, you go in there, we go and you paint and you draw. And I do a drawing, and the, the the nun would want me to paint it, and I always thought I messed it up. God, now it looks like crap. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't want to go anymore. And and the nun was like, Well, how come Jeffrey doesn't want to come? And uh, they goes, Well, because he doesn't want to paint, because he likes to draw, and he thinks he messed it up. Well, have him come. You know, he won't have to paint. So mm -hmm. I went back, and I did my drawing. And they said, now put some paint on it. I go, oh, that's it. I never went back. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I found your sore spot. And I hope you lean into that discomfort one day. And as someone who's mastered anything with mark making and lines to do something but that I, but I, you know, I don't, breaks I don't, the line. I, I mean, I, how fucking I, I awesome could a gesture or watercolor be? I just think I feel real insecure. And I just think that. Well, don't show it to anybody except for me. Like, you well, know, I mean, I mean, I'm insecure about the stuff you know? that, I, that I publish. I mean. I would love this. I would love a camera pointed at your face oh. and one at the page while you're doing a watercolor and just see you cringing like, oh, like, <laughs> like those Warhol blowjob films or something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, 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 Dave, man, uh, Je if you evangelize Jeff on the watercolor thing, that's like that's like the third notch on your belt, right? Like you, you got Stern in the game you got you got joe rogan watercolor in and then yeah uh, i mean it doesn't have to be watercolor i mean anything like oil you know pastels whatever just something I, I, as someone who's already started. this good at creating images and mark making just to switch the the media and see what happens uh just yeah and, it, and you might hate it right i, I did probably, do a painting of a donkey for my daughter for <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I've had love it for the longest time. I, I still have that donkey. I still have the head because it's on a big sheet of paper. I, it was with show, show us the fucking donkey, dude. <laughs> Let's I'm have a donkey playing. show. It's not, it's yeah. not my office. Donkey I'm show. Really. Straight, donkey. straight from TJ, man. Let's go to Tijuana. Yes. Have a donkey show. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff, do you ever have pains in your hand from drawing? You know, like like Dave's talking about the how hard you press the pencil. Is that ever an issue? I knock on wood. I, no, but lately I've had a little bit, uh, but I, I'm not sure if it's because I'm sleeping weirdly on my hand or if I'm, uh, but for the most part, you know, I knock on wood. No, and I'm always thinking about people that had that metacarpal. Yeah, carpal tunnel, tunnel syndrome. 
and I think Jesus because I, I think yeah, I you'd be the candidate. But I don't know how it is. Maybe it's because of the position on my table. Because it's yeah. I, you know, the angle of it is about like that. I'm drawing almost straight up. Yeah, Maybe it's, just 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 seeing well. you hold your hand that way, like that. That's like the indicator that you could prevent that. Because they say that it's like it, you know, it's right here, and it's about you know, cutting it off, kink, kinking up the, uh, mm. kinking up the nerve. You know, is with, with this this kind of motion. So if you're yeah, kind of well, if you're kind of keeping the wrist uh, kind of locked, you should be good. Hey Dave, you know what, man? You know I'm listening to the podcast, the the old DVD ASA stuff, and there and there's the episode, the first one where uh, Joe Rogan shows up, right? And and it's very fashionable these days to talk shit on that guy and whatever, man. Super successful, all of that, but uh, he actually rubbed me the wrong way uh, on the show, man, because you were like, the Jack Kirby Hulk is like gold standard, and and Joe Rogan goes fuck that old generic shit like i ain't, i don't care about jack kirby it hurt, it, it hurt me but then the fun thing is is that dave is so deep that you will allow the nerd stuff to show through a little bit every w once or twice every episode so so dave gets into it and he's like you know it's todd mcfarlane who drew the best talk and then right after him jeff purvis and after i hear jeff purvis a guy who drew what like six issues eight issues or something that's a that's a good pedigree right there man that's a, that's a lifer when you pull out JP's name. Yeah, I mean, I, I let, I you know, it's just, there's a embarrassment of how much I love comics in my youth, and now I just don't care anymore. Yeah. So I'm, I'm on the set of Beef, and, you know, I'm waving a gun around, I got my costume on, whatever, and my character already, you know, they've written into my character that I scream out some comic book stuff. And of course, I like to ad lib, so I throw in like Wolverine cannot be circumcised, and, I'm, <laughs> and a lot of it made it. A lot of it made it I'm happy about. So if you watch Beef, you see like how much I drop comic book shit throughout the whole. You know, I talk about X Men. So the director of photography, Larkin, who's like, you know, he shot everything, everywhere, all at once. Beef, mm -hmm. like he's award winning uh, cinematographer. He's he's like Dave, you you really fucking like. Like, you're into it. Like, I go, oh, yeah, I go every Wednesday. He goes, can you help me out? He goes, you know this character Spawn? I go, what the fuck, dude? Of course I know Spawn. <laughs> He's like, I saw this drawing in my childhood, and it was Spawn, like, holding, like, all these fucking guns. And I go, oh, it's Greg Capullo, it's McFarlane. He's like, ah. It's just, it was just this one point in time where I was got into comic books for a second, and so I start sending him all these photos and he's like, no, that's not it. That's not it. I was like, can you describe it more? And he goes, it's the most detailed drawing of Spawn I've ever seen. I go, Jeff Darrow pinup. Oh, yeah. That's my first Jeff so, Darrow for sure. So I send it to him and he's like, dude, that's I've been fucking looking for that my whole life. And he's like, I'm going to get that tattooed on my back. No. Uh, <laughs> so the fact that you fucking draw a character once and it's had that much impact on one of the top Hollywood cinematographers. I mean, really? you're the fucking man, dude. You're the fucking man. And and like, okay, I'm sitting here talking to you about watercolor, but you have so much graffiti in Hard Boiled and every, there's graffiti on every single thing you do. So I know at least you're observing the graffiti. I would love to see Jeff Darrow with a spray can tagging up Paris, um, London, all, all of Europe. Like, I, I can't believe you haven't experimented with spray paint. It's so liberating. Like, oh, you know, that, that to me is interesting. Yeah. You know, Cho, yeah. th this this comes to mind. You bring up the graffiti thing, man. And right now in L.A., there are these like big. Do you see this on the news, man? The big luxury abandoned high rises. Oh, yeah. Uh, right. Where on every floor of every balcony. Yeah. Um, it's a it's a murderer's row. It's 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 yeah. a, a mur murderer's row of uh graffiti artists putting like their big burners up this entire 50 floor thing and i i was thinking about you dave because i'm like is this um like dark knight returns for dave cho where he's he's <laughs> he's having he's at a ballroom with a commissioner gordon drinking some shit and then sees on the tv on the news that there's this <laughs> giant skyscraper because they've been dude it's crazy it's it's grand theft auto san andreas what's happening with this building because like i'll see instagrams with dudes that have fucking parachutes on jumping yeah. from the top balconies into parking lots <laughs> there are people who put painting these big burners and stuff like that and i'm like is dave cho at some some ballroom some sort of illuminati <laughs> some mark zuckerberg party and no i checked it out the news and it's like oh i it's saw it get back. dude i 
every everyone's been sending me videos i you know i live close by so i went to check it out yesterday literally uh if i wanted to have my next art show there because it's like an unfinished bu building right and they're like yeah there's no toilets there's no working elevators i'm like perfect just shit on the floor you know <laughs> uh but my dark night returns moment was actually when i when i moved to portugal um i i get there and it's you know you talk about murderers row i mean there's there was some revoke pieces there's like msk there's like la guys there's uh brazil guys there's French, there's, it's every single style of graffiti from every country. And it's on like 17th century buildings. It's on churches. It's, and the, and I go, what's happening? I asked the guy, Vils, it's a big, big street art uh, guy out there. He's like the Banksy of, of Portugal. I asked Vils, what, what the fuck is happening out here? He's like, they don't care. They like it and they don't clean it up. So wow. all the graffiti artists are coming to Portugal and bombing the shit out of like farmhouses. And I go, am I? <laughs> gonna be 50 years old tagging again like this is this is crazy so i i, I started feeling the itch coming on again but uh, <laughs> yeah i mean i guess i, I don't want to just push my shit onto everyone and project that stuff but I, it's just i all i'm saying to uncle jeff is we know what you do you fucking murder the game they're the goat like there's no one better than you what happens when you give a goat a watercolor brush, a spray can, an oil painting, some turpentine. Like, it might be disastrous, or it might be like the best thing ever, or it might be extremely liberating and freeing. Uh, just to, I heard Robert Williams talk once, and he's like, I don't know how Mark Ryden does all these paintings without like a black line around it. He's like, I have to have a black line around everything, you know. Um, so that's the part of the program where Uncle Jeff, we were going to try to talk you into uh, doing some watercolor. Now's the part where. Uncle Jeff and the Kayfabe boys try to figure out how to get Dave Cho back to Japan so that we could uh, bring him along <laughs> on, on the manga quests. I, I, you guys make me these, these. So to the people listening, these fucking guys. Uh, quick story. I'm, you know, I got arrested when I was 20, 20 years ago in Japan. So I, that's very hard for me to get back in. I can. It's just very difficult. And so these guys go on these book hunting trips to Japan. And they're getting all like the best manga, sending me photos, making me super jealous. And yeah, I would love, love to join you guys one day on one of those trips. Bring it. Look at that shit. What is that? What's that right um, there, Jeff? He's reading it now. <laughs> oh, now this one. Oh, what, he, what he's showing off right there. That, that's, that. that's, that's, fucking... that's my white whale. That's a, that's a Osama Tezuka artist I mean, that edition, like essentially. A... It said do do ro ro story, do -ro -ro. and uh, it was look how proud he is. Look at how happy he is. <laughs> it was one of those things, man. I was at that store, I was at that store three times before Jeff got to Japan at that moment. Because like, whenever we make these trips, I always like to try to go there, you know, a day or two earlier to, uh, you know, hit all the spots first, man, and, and and scoop everything up. And I passed that book up a lot because I didn't know what it was. Wow, look at that! And it was the first time I took. Uh, First time that Jeff was at is that like an Akihabara. artist edition? Or it something? is, yeah. yeah. There's like whiteout and stuff on there. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah it's, it it's... is. And and Jeff scooped that up immediately, and I'm like, I passed that book up three times already, man. I'm so fucking mad. Oh my god, look at that. Well, it's and it's it's uh, it's funny because it's it's stitched together. It's not like glued. It's like done like an old. Uh, you know, yeah, man. And we just had. Uh, Sean, the Japan book hunter, who's a big Dave Cho fan, by the way, uh, Dave. Oh, when, really? Whenever, whenever we uh, did the return episode when, when uh, earlier in this this year, when you came back and we we sat with you, he was like, "If if you get David Cho to come out here, like you gotta bring him by." I've been a fan of his since the Vice days. Like I will give oh, wow. him whatever he wants. Blah blah blah. Oh wow! But uh, he, all right, I'll go. In. I'll get in just for that. <laughs> he uh, Jeff, he he just put together. He's he got the Kitaro. Uh, artist edition for you ready to go and, and and pack up and then i i put him on the hunt like yo i want those three artist editions there, also the, uh, i should tell no joe one yeah too yeah that one because the, the reason I, I figured that this was what it was when we saw it Ed, was because i'd seen the i should tell no joe one in, in, in paris yeah and I thought, that's gotta be you know i was going to grab that series when I was out there last time, but they just uh, released the news this past uh, week that that uh, Kodan I think Kodansha is going to be uh, translating Ashita Nojo in, into English finally, man. So 
I'll just uh, scoop those up as they come out. But Cho, you because come up, you come up in conversation all the time when we're out there. So some of it revolves around when you and I, Dave uh, hung out in in LA. I mean, when you and uh, Jeff hung out in LA. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I yeah, I. Anything I could like th these trips sound like fantasy camp to me. Like I would love that. Um, but Jeff, I wanted to ask you on on the record, like for myself, I've for for years for decades i'll i'll make art and i'll just as soon as it's done i'll hate it i'll be like that's horrible and and if i look at it like a year later a few years later i'm like i can't even believe i made that that's so that's so bad and then as i start like and you know a normie telling me my art's cool is like whatever to me like someone saying oh he can draw good i'm like i don't i don't care but then as i've started to get the respect of my peers and other artists that i look up to telling me then my confidence grows a little bit and now i'm at the point you know where i don't i don't even care if i like it or not but I, I i generally for the most part love the art that i do and it's like some people go that's the worst shit you've ever done i go that's fine that's your opinion um as someone you know i call you the goat because you are as someone who has collaborated oh. with frank miller with you know mobius like you know the fucking matrix guys like um you know every all these fucking top level japanese artists like everyone knows and respects you and gives you props as yeah you're already shaking your head at, at some point do you are you ever gonna allow yourself to be like hey i'm actually pretty good people like my shit like or is it always for you to stay in the game and to create, you got to always put yourself one down and be like, I'm not that good. So I got to keep proving myself every issue. Uh, yeah, I, I've always. Like you, you're very, very uncomfortable right now, right? With the, this level of compliments. And... Well, you know, I, I always worry about becoming complacent. I remember. I won't you, say have you ever, uh, like the way we talk about you, have you ever opened up like a page of hard boiled or, or uh, RGTBR? And just been like, Rust, what is it? Big guy and Rusty the boy robot, and just been like, this is fucking unbelievable. This no. fucking Godzilla looking monster, fucking with fire coming out of every window. Well, like I, no. I am the fucking man. I drew this no. shit. Like, no, I, 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 I do. I, I am always like, happy that a god I was actually able to draw a car. There's little <laughs> things that, like. Little moments like uh, the thing that I take away, I remember about big guy is like there's a shot of the monster and he's it's from the back and already you're drawing a monster from the back. It's not much fun because you know you want to draw the face and this and that and he's heading away from you. And I and I came up with the idea, he's got all these spikes. I thought, what if there's like cars stuck on his spikes of his tail? And I drew that. And I was so happy with myself <laughs> that I come up with that idea because. It made it interesting for me to draw. I'm always looking for something that will make me interested in the drawing, whatever I'm doing. Like if it's a guy sitting, that's why, you know, I'll have like dogs pooping or <laughs> the bird. Because I think, you know, it's just a guy standing there. But if in the background, there's a dog taking a dump. So dogs taking a shit in the background and monsters from behind are you, you that that's, makes it interesting to you. You're like, I. Well, there's some, it's something extra because, you know, and lately I've been taken to like, if I got just a, a head and he's talking, I go, what can I put in the background? So mm -hmm. it's just not just a talking head. And I'll like, I've been, I just, you know, like I'll have a like pterodactyl flying behind his head or something like that. I mean, you, you sent me a drawing recently of just uh, a landscape. <laughs> There's yeah. nothing. Just It's the most fucking detailed. <laughs> it's the most detailed lens. <laughs> I mean, you're drawing every pebble, every yeah, little tuft really. of grass. I mean, it's that was... insane. <laughs> And that, I added that because I'd already finished that whole sequence. And I thought, I, just, I, kept, I wake up thinking about something. I'm like, you know, he's really a lonely guy. There should be a drawing of him just like isolation. And I did that one because he's really tiny, tiny in the panel. So do you, I mean, if, when you look back at your whole career, because Shaolin Cowboy is pretty much just you. And then you have your collaborations with Frank Miller. You did the thing with Mobius. Like, do you, do you like working collaborating more with other people and other artists and writers or do you like just doing your own thing i'd kind of like to just because i think if i if i, if I work with someone who wrote the thing maybe i could get it done quicker because i wouldn't 
I wouldn't write some sequence in there that I know is going to be a pain in the ass to draw like this one I've done now. It's just, why did I do this? But I, I'm too far into it to not. Mm. We've, so rec you get to we've recognized a pattern do, doing these interviews and, and getting to know our you know cartoonist heroes and stuff. And, and it, it does feel like a direct formula where the sort of more self-effacing the cartoonist is, the higher the quality of the work. And there are the cartoonists who, who really, really believe in themselves. And their work is at a more diminished level, we'll say. You know, they're, 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 uh, well, I, I, I agree to you up to a point and, and that's why I hope you don't take it the wrong way, Jeff. I wasn't earlier when I said the law of diminishing returns for your artwork. It's not like your quality of arts getting less. It's still at the same level. I'm just saying as a fan or reader, because I'm getting so much chocolate and sweetness, it, it doesn't have the same impact when you're getting hit with great art over, you know, it's like, um, well, yeah, I'm, I'm just a second. I'm going to let my cat. P Peter Chung talked about that on the, on the channel, uh, when he was talking about, you have to build in subtle moments into a story to make the impactful ones, you know, have, yeah, have major resonance. Yeah, I, so that, that's a, that's a philosophy. Oh, it is. And I, I, I worry about that. I don't, I, I don't think I, well, I, I, when I did agree with what you said, 100%, because I, I used to say that all the time, I used to preach it. I used to be like, you have to suffer constantly to be a great artist. And the second you find a glimpse of joy, your art sucks. <laughs> and I was like, but can I give my permission for my art to suck so that I can be a little bit happier in my life? <laughs> and, and so that's something I believe. I was like, I don't know a person, an artist, a musician, a filmmaker that makes transcendent next level legendary art that is like a well-adjusted person they're all like fucking crazy psychotic i mean people. you know but, but I mean, he was you know i'd be with him on days when he was just depressed and I, because oh, i saw this young man's art he's so good i'll never be that good and it's like oh my god <laughs> you know and that's I how you felt when he saw your stuff no, no. And I said, I said to him, I said, you know, man, if I could be you on your worst day, I'd be the happiest man on earth. You're better, you're better than him. No. You're better than Mobius. He's, he's, what well, he, he's just, yeah. I mean, and he was a joyful guy. I mean, just, I think his art has a lot of joy in it and a lot of, just, just try it on for me, Jeff, just one day, like Tuesday next week, just put on your hat a little bit differently and be like, I'm fucking dope. I'm Jeff Darrow, bitch. <laughs> I'm everything and just be super proud of your art and then just draw that day as someone who's like loves himself and his art and is super proud of himself and everything that he's created and see if how shitty or great your art is that day when you when you just fake it that day just pretend you're not you that day um yeah <laughs> I don't know well, he's, he's, this, I mean, is, this is this is a this is a you know this is the conversation across time of like do you need to be depressed miserable all this to create not, not, and the answer is it's it's somewhere in the middle it's great right and and i tell people this you don't need to suffer like do you need to suffer for art to be a great artist the answer is absolutely 100 percent yes but you've already suffered you don't have to continue like when you tell me of stories of guys kicking your ribs in and all that it's like you've already suffered you don't need to like keep kicking your own ribs in you know so um i yeah i don't uh i, I know that's part of the art the, the self-deprecating all that stuff but i don't know i just um and i like it when you collaborate with people i mean i i told you i got to meet frank miller for the first time a few years ago and i and my first time meeting him i'm interviewing him on stage at la comic-con and I asked him when he's going to get back together with Lynn Varley, and he snapped yeah, at me. Was <laughs> uh, he, he was confused for a moment, and he went some other. Yeah. He went to some like media trained like answer yeah. sound bite, and then he and then you were like, "No, man, I meant like when romantically." And he's like, "None of your goddamn business." <laughs> but yeah, I'm like, as someone who's a huge fan of early Frank Miller and like his weird Sharpie drawings, like I even like that shit that he's doing now. I picked up the Ronin 2, which is absolutely horrible, but I still like it. Like, I, I you know, it's just, the, the, the it's thing, unreadable. And the last issue, he, it says he drew everything and wrote everything. And I'm like, wow, this is, this is not good. But as just, I'm, I'm in, I'm in on Frank Miller. So I like it. 
the thing um, that gets me about that comic book, I have to ask you, about the, you what you guys think. I've gotten them. I haven't gotten the last one, but uh, because they sent them to me. I, there's not a, like a local American comic shop around here, and I but somebody in Paris that sends them to me. Is that there's not a single background in that comic. No, <laughs> and it drives me crazy. Yeah, they're just like, floating. I don't, cause, Everyone's cause just I don't floating. know where it's taking place. Are they? Yep. Are they like in the Matrix somewhere? Yeah, there's and nothing the, grounding there's about like a, one of those Frank Miller brick walls. You know, it's just like <laughs> black with white lines. You know, I fucking point, knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Ed, when Ed, Jim, and Ed, when you did the the Ronin, uh, the first Ronin, you would go through each issue, and I and I, I'd look at it and go, God, he used to do backgrounds and they're detailed. And you get these views of the city, and you had this whole idea of of, of what this world was. And the new one, you know, I just don't know. I'd love I, to ask him. As as I was reading yeah. it, I would uh, I was thinking this must bug the shit out of Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, so I you just you, you just I, said I, I would love. It's just jealousy. Can I wish I could do this because it's all like big figures and it's fun to do a big figure and I I can't. But let me. You just ended that thing by saying I would love to ask him. And then earlier in the conversation, you said, "Oh, I I didn't hit up Mobius while while he was dying because I didn't want to bother him." Like you, you do have Frank Miller's phone number, right? I mean, Why? He doesn't answer. I can't get through to him. He can't. I can't talk to him. I have to go through somebody, and so otherwise, I, I would talk to him. I mean, we used to be able to. I mean, I think the last time he called me was when Mobius died and I wasn't home. All right, you know? who's ever listening? Who's like close to Frank? I mean, come on, man. Like, make this. Like, do you guys have bad blood or something? Like, did something go down or? But it's just yeah. you know, Frank has you know certain things and. I, I, like I was texting back and forth with Paul Pope about this, and it's just that you know, it's as Frank. Last time we talked, we were talking. Frank, and I asked him, "How come I can't just call you and just voice got kind of quiet and said, oh. uh, it's complicated.'" He said it's complicated. Yeah, and that, oh, was, man. So. that makes me sad, man. That bumps me out. I mean, I you know, I mean, because we almost died in a car together. Some, uh, but I mean, you guys made beautiful art together. You guys changed fucking comics forever with the shit well, you have made together. He, like. I mean, he said he was so gracious with me, and so because you know, and the Wachowskis used to laugh about this. They thought I was lying because I said I I didn't know I wasn't supposed to do that, and they thought I was just that was my way of getting away with something. Oh, really? I can't do that because I didn't know I couldn't change things, and I would I added things that weren't in the script, and I added pages that weren't in the script. And I mean, I have no idea what his script looks like for that. But I'm like reading that going, what is he really like? I'm okay, fine. He writes like a loose background, but the the detail is all you, man. And at at the age and the family, I I grew up in a family that's very heavy on puns. So Mm -hmm. like the Jesus Chrysler shit and all that, like (laughs) any any of the puns, like we're, you know, we were way too young to probably be reading that. We we loved all the dog shit. We loved all the porno stuff. We were like, you know, we were the kids going like, we're definitely not. So- hey, there's people fucking in the background. That guy's holding a dildo. Like, you know, <laughs> it's like, is Frank Miller writing dog shitting in the background? Guy holding a dildo, like guy doing this, like, so. Frank was bothered by my scatological. Uh, he didn't, he didn't like things. all the poop. Especially Lynn. Lynn, it bothered her. Oh, like, man, I would love to see a Lynn Varley painted jeff darrow poop I mean, she, yeah. she probably wouldn't do it i mean maybe it would stop me if i've told maybe you guys heard this story how, cl- how close I, w- w- was there I a conversation a, of her coloring pardon me was there was there a conversation of her coloring hard-boiled oh never no oh uh, well i don't maybe a little bit maybe but maybe it would be coming out like even, next year <laughs> if just, <laughs> i don't know because i mean she's another tortured tortured soul about that stuff and i mean i was hanging around with them a lot when she was doing electra lives and it was really, you know, she was really, it was painful for her, you know, doing it. And she never thought that, you know, it was. Yeah, it's, it's was as amazing. a fan, it's like, aside from Frank Miller, I'm like, wow, whoever this Lynn Varley is, is an amazing painter. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then, you know, they get divorced or whatever. And then I never see, I'm like, oh, she doesn't paint other guys stuff or her own stuff. No, or... she's, she's went into, I mean, I don't, I can't, another person's disappear out of my life. See, all this shit, it makes me sad, man. And, and like the, like, I, 
like all my friends, most of my friends that do art are, are they're not really like abstract or minimalist artists. They're always like people that the, the work, when you see it, it's very, very time consuming. So there is that air of like, I don't want to bother them. They don't want to bother me. And then all of a sudden, like they just disappear or they die. And you're like, oh, shit, should have hung out more, or, you know, this uh, and that. So that, I, that happened to me recently with uh, you sent me that picture of the Nixon's uh, statue. Yeah, that was sculpted by a close friend of mine, Kent Melton. Uh -huh. And he just died about a week ago. And I haven't talked to him in probably two years. Oh, and wow. I, I, that makes me sad because I, you know, Every time you call me or we talk or I call you is a gift to me, Jeff. I just want to say that. <laughs> Same. And, then to, and to Jim and Ed also, like, whenever we, we talk, like, I'm, I'm like, <laughs> you guys Remember, are like. I, I get on the phone and I'll go on. And I always say, got to tell the same stories over and over again. And uh, I want to be one of those, you know, like. No, you won't. I remember when the Indians were attacking and. Uh, and uh, <laughs> And I was a scout with the Seventh Cavalry. No, what your what your there there are jewels coming out of your mouth. It's like the the stuff you're tell you've they're, shared with us. Are, like, we're just people that looked up to you as our art gods, and we just go. You know, was Mobius in a sex cult? What was that like? Or what was Frank like? Or what was Lynn like? Cult. Or what was this like? Or what was it like it's to exactly do this? And like exactly. when you share this information, it's like oh. You know, I didn't know what Libertor was fucking the man and doing this and that. It's like, <laughs> it's it's nice to hear those shit. You know, it's like uh, this entire life before the internet. Now, you know, like anybody who wants to know anything about me, they just fucking go on any of my social media. And they're like, oh, that's what his shit looks like this morning. You know, like there's no mystery <laughs> anymore. So the stuff you're you're leaving with, uh, us with is is like, that's art history, man. That's fucking gold it really me. is man there's, there's not really like a mentorship kind of thing that happens in comics anymore you always hear about like you know the, the old timers would have would have some kid that's this is how you get your like dave stevens under russ manning kind of thing and and yeah. that's it's just we're not set up that way it's very individualistic so it's it's it is super cool to have somebody to uh who who knew the guys man that, that has like direct first-hand stories so that you're not a part of that hive mind or or uh popular opinion that you know you just see floating around on the internet that was interesting that being at Hanna Barbera that the period that I was there because there were so many you know there was Kirby and there's Carmen Infantino and there was um, all the, the Filipino artists and there were like just uh, Alfredo Alcala yeah and uh, uh, Alex Nino and uh, I mean Frank Bruner uh, <laughs> yeah. was there and uh, just a lot of because I mean it was it was after doing comics I guess it was really good money because I mean you you'd work a, a, a you know a set amount of hours every week but there were so many of those great guys and guys that you've never uh, well I didn't even know that it was the guy that uh, that 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 the uh, Hernandez brothers always talk about the guy that did all the Dennis the Menace Owen Fitzgerald. Mm. Uh, and he did all those, you know, uh, Dennis the Menace goes to Hawaii and Dennis the Menace goes to Acapulco. And he was there and we talked to him. And I had no idea that that's what he did. I just talked to him because he, he, he loved his fig Newtons and he was a real interesting kind of a, kind of a guy. But... Do you know which episodes of Hanna-Barbera stuff where your art appears? Yeah, yeah. But, but kind of, yeah. I mean, which, if you're looking which... around 82 or if you watched Richie Rich, you know, I watched. Rich. I worked. I worked on those. A lot of those, but I did mostly vehicles. But then, in around eighty-two or eighty-three, I was working on Super Friends, and I mostly did the monsters and the spaceships because I, the characters, I was never really very good at because I, I just couldn't get that that style. But the monsters, they didn't give a shit about, and the spaceships, they didn't give a shit about. So, I. I skate on that but I our guy tom <laughs> swears that whenever you look at those last seasons because i think you you show up mostly like in towards the end of super friends he, he swears yeah. that you could you could pick the jeff darrow pieces out of a lineup really yeah yeah the I mean, I've, never, stuff. I've, I've hardly ever watched them you know uh i think i watched one to see if my name was on there and it was <laughs> it was on there I mean, yeah, it was, it's on there. My names are on the shows that I worked on. I worked on, I mean, I worked a little bit on the Smurfs and the Scooby-Doo. Uh, was uh, Peo, was he really a Satanist, that guy? Who? 
the Smurfs guy, P P P E Y. I don't know. He would come in. He was interesting. I liked him because he made a deal like they couldn't. He had uh, he could write a refusal. He was very protective. They, they talked about him at my church like he was the Antichrist. They were like Smurfs are blue. They represent well, that, death. That, that was Dark a Amel, big deal. Azrael are demons, and they were like they're trying to. I like, know they tried to get the the Japanese wanted to run the Smurfs because it was so popular in Japan, but the color blue mm -hmm. was was not. Yeah, and they wanted him to change it to red. And Peo said no, no. Ooh, <laughs> red <laughs> Smurfs. Yeah, red Smurfs is dope. I like that. Yeah, well, they'd be like the Onis, you know, the 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 demon. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how about well, you guys because I, when I was living over there, and they had there's that one day where you're supposed to throw soy beans because mm -hmm. that's when this the, this red you know you see the the red demon it's a typical yeah. Japanese demon and it's got red it's got like wearing a leopard skin loincloth and it's got like yellow hair and it's got horns and big teeth and this and that and you're supposed to be threw soy beans at it that would dissolve. And I'm convinced that about the time that thing came out, it was when that Dutch ship, that they have ships that would, you know, a beach in Japan. And if you saw like a, a blonde white guy who'd been in the sun too long, he'd be probably beat red, he'd have his <laughs> blonde hair, and he would probably look, it'd be so oh, big, wow. he'd probably look like a demon. And I bet that's where that all came from. Wow. <laughs> You're probably right. Because I mean, you know, right. I mean, when I was there, I was, I was just so big. And... You how do know, they how do they treat you in Japan when they're there? Like, well, I, I, I told him I said, I, I'm working at Madhouse and I was talking with the, the other people. And I said, what, what do people think of me here? And they said, mm, many Japanese are afraid of foreigners, and you are a very big foreigner. <laughs> <laughs> and I would do I would do things that kind of test it. Like, uh, remember, excuse me if I told you this, but. They were doing construction in the building and they put down like paper sheets in front of the door that you could wipe your feet on before you entered the, the office. And so I drew my face on the thing to see if everybody would wipe their shoes off my face. <laughs> I just knew they wouldn't do it to them. be disrespectful and they, and they didn't. <laughs> I, 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 I like they had the 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 the, the this men's men's and women's sign, and I would take it like on the women's. There's a little silhouette of a woman's body, and I remember cutting out or drawing Ultraman and like sticking his head on the on the on the on the, on the, on the silhouette for the women's room and in the men's room. And I could just every once in a while I come up there and I just see somebody standing there looking up at it, and I could know they're thinking, "Do we take this down?" But if we take it down, it's the guy Jin who put it up there. <laughs> Might be offended, so it was still there when I left. You know? there, you're shit disturber. You're the, that's the the soul of a graffiti artist right there. You're already when I'd go around because they had they had one guy was they were collecting one of the guys I was working on, on the film I was working on. He was collecting bottle caps. And it was for a children's charity, and so so oh well, yeah, that's a cool thing. So I would go around and I would go through the garbage and pull out the you know the tea bottles and the coke bottles whatever they were drinking of and i'd take the cab off and i just see people kind of looking out of the corner like what's that crazy guy doing now he's going through the garbage because nobody would do that and I'd, and I'd collect a big bag full of these bottle caps and such and take them and give to the guy for his charity but they were you know you know what's fun too, man, is Uncle Jeff, he opens up doors because of, of, of his pedigree and when we were there uh, last time and my, my last day out there actually uh we went to the um little workshop mm -hmm. with the dude who um sculpted shin godzilla and uh oh. that dude he's like involved with miyazaki sculpting all kinds of crazy toys and things for him and uh came and rider villains and shit like tell tell the people who who that guy is jeff and and sort of like what we what it. we bared witness to i think his name is takeda i think uh he, yeah, he's just, he sculpts toys, and he, uh, another artist, uh, Hiro, you know, you met Hiro, who, who did uh, uh, The Empire Strikes Back, the manga version. Yeah, the Dark Horse ones, like if you've seen those yeah. uh, movie ad adaptations for uh, for uh, the Star Wars flicks that, that were put up by Dark Horse, like this dude, Hiro, did them shits, man, and super, yeah, super and awesome he artist. Said, oh, you wanna, he said, I'll take you over, we'll meet the Godzilla man. 
It's a Godzilla man. Well, he just he sculpted Shin Godzilla for the. So cool. So we went over there, and I mean, it's it's a it's a. I think I maybe I've sent you a picture, David, but it's funny because it's just like a little, not a very big building or, or, or apartment. And it's just full of like model kits and little pieces. This and that, and they've got like all these toy. The things that they're making for toys are going to make sculptures of, and they're just there's drawings, and it's just. It's like a Frankenstein's laboratory, but with all this cool anime and monster stuff and robot stuff. They do things for commercials and uh, he does an art show. That, Ed, that book that he had, this guy had a sketchbook to take the top of your head off. Yeah. Yeah. You David, never, David, it would blow your fucking mind. About, man, you, you just could never reproduce it because uh -huh. it's just part sculpture, part painting, part drawing. And it's just, it's like, like this thick. Yeah. So say, so say on like the last page, he sculpts a, a big face. And then yeah. so every previous page, he's cutting out the paper oh, as you wow. get to like page one. So the, the hole gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So like as you're turning the pages, like there'll just be a small, tiny hole. And then yeah. he's also, um, cut, David, it actually reminds me of the jail sketchbooks and stuff, like the stuff that we see in Dirty Hands where you're taking like little food wrappers and and mm -hmm. in, in inserting that into the piece and then maybe using you know the the condiments to to like paint something like yeah. it, it's it's all yeah. of that it's like the necronomicon from evil dead you know because yeah. there's sculpture on yeah. the end of it and then the sculpture it was like like a fucking like a muscle face like you know with the flayed skin coming off or something and was super ornate you know this guy who's who makes you know millions of yen in special yeah. effects <laughs> a, a trip to japan for an artist who's not been there and takes as a pilgrimage out there can be i i would use the word overwhelming is one word um and it could be extremely inspiring you go out there and you see all this shit and you're like holy shit but if you if you're subscribing to the artists who are self-effacing self-deprecating you know self-destructive and that's what creates i mean the art coming out of there of these artists that are like I'm no good. I'm a piece of shit. Here, look at my art. And then you're like, wait, what is this? And it's just comic book after comic book, sculptures, just the shit coming out. Like, one trip to Tokyo is, it's like mind blowing. You're like, yeah. it's just, yeah. what the fuck? And then you're like, how do I even stand out in this, you know? Um, you go to the art shows out there, and, you know, at the end, there'll be like, you know, draw on a post it note and say your thank yous to the to the artist that you it, you know you just enjoyed and a hundred percent of the people who draw stuff and put it in a little post-it note up are incredible artists yeah you know <laughs> just just every regular person could draw yeah. the fuck out of anything and pretty wild and if you don't remember when i went there the first time in 82 i, I you know very touristy which i'm not very much so but uh, anymore but i, I remember we're going to the zoo and there were kids drawing and you know like eight-year-olds they're drawing better than you know, yeah. That a lot of guys like because their their sense of perspective exists at like seven right. years old. Their yeah. houses aren't just you know like a A with the box. I mean, it's you know they got the pitched roof and yeah. the thing you learn when you're like, wow, yeah. It's a the level of just either understand. I don't know if it's a genetic thing, maybe I don't know, but geez, I'm just amazed by the the quality of their drawing. Guys, we could do this forever, man. Uh, it's it's so much fun talking to you, and it was fun to to get both of you guys together. But uh, in the same I didn't spirit, hear much from Jim. <laughs> Jimmy, I mean, got I'm I, listening, I, man. I'm, I'm taking yeah, it I, in. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for me, I just like I'll just fucking talk how much I love you the whole time, and yeah, I mean, if, like like I said, I I, I, I my, I'm saying this, David, because I'd seen the your you know your your Kate Fabe the you know the shoot interviews and like oh my god this guy holy shit wow and i remember calling, calling up my daughter and going geez you know you've got to listen to this guy and then david <laughs> johnny goes she goes well yeah he come he's come and seen us at san diego goes, what <laughs> oh jesus i hope it wasn't an asshole jesus christ oh man uh, really because yeah she knew she knew who you were i did i i did i mean this this is kind of a douchey story but yeah i've i've gone to comic con almost every comic con i missed one here or there but i've been going for maybe 15 years maybe 20 years so i always see you there 
Um, and I, you know, sometimes you're next to Stan Sakai. Uh, sometimes you're, you know, and I remember at some point, this is maybe five or six years ago, I was starting to get more recognized and it's not like I'm getting mobbed like Leonardo DiCaprio or Tom Cruise or something like that, but it, it was enough where it was, I just want to go and be a nerd and buy my shit and not like take pictures or talk to anybody. So my costume <laughs> right before someone said that as a joke, like, what are you going to do? Wear a cardboard box on your head. So I put a cardboard box on my head and I just walked in the comic con and I went to every booth that I wanted to go. I bought all the shit I wanted. I got all the art, whatever. And then I stopped at your booth and I asked, do you want to draw on my on my box? And your daughter drew something and then you drew something. And then you actually was I have I got to find this photo. You were like wearing it on your head. It was like the best picture. I remember <laughs> and I'm like, this is like this is like a goofy dude. And then part of that is, you know, over the years, the I'm like, there's a little girl next to him. That must be your daughter. And she's always drawing and you're drawing. And it was such a, you know, I just assumed it was your daughter. And now I know it was your daughter. And the fact that I got to meet her and she's super gifted and talented. And she's working on Futurama, I believe, right now. And it's just like, wow. Like, that's what a wonderful, you know, getting to know you and Alice and and your guys' relationship and what that was like. And I have my own kids now. And, like, like that's been one of the most wonderful things. But, yeah, I... I I love, uh, you know, I love going down Artist Alley. I love going to cons and meeting artists and getting to know them, hearing their stories. And so, yeah, connecting with you for the first time, I got off the phone with you. I felt like I was on drugs. And then it was like, you wish you were. Shit. Like, I fucking, I can't believe I'm talking to this guy and he's calling me sir and all that. And then I think we went up, we're like, let's do something together. Let's go out. And you're like, fuck yeah. I was like, yes. Was like maybe you draw it and I write it or I draw it and you write it or I draw a piece and you and we were going. And, and as I sat there and my head was spinning, I go, I just am enjoying getting to know you right now and being your friend so much that I don't want to crud anything up with work because it's like if that ever happens, it'll happen organically. And it's just that's my thing always. It's like, let's do something together. Let's do something together. It's like, yeah, you know, I keep forcing these guys to try to do something together. It's not going to happen. I get it. But like, <laughs> you know, I, I just really, really love you and appreciate you. And, and, you know, of course, like, oh, yeah, the art that you do and everything that you've accomplished and your pedigree and this and that. Yeah, for sure. But just you as a kind well, soul, nice person. I, I just love having well, this relationship. I, I love you. I love you guys because I, I, you know, it's just really corny, but I've never really felt part of the American comic uh, scene because I don't. Whenever I hear like, when we have guys on there, they're always, you know, like they worked at uh, they worked at Marvel or they worked at DC. Even I, I'll talk with Mike Mignola and I'm close with him, but I don't have that, you know, that that history that all those guys have. Like, talk with you guys, maybe it's like I finally have people that I. <laughs> in the industry because i mean i don't know because it's interesting i mean your stories are like to you i can hear what you're saying you're like oh there's an old guy telling like but all your stories are they're like jaw dropping for me it's hanging out with libertor <laughs> like all that, yeah. all that guy's <laughs> shit you know i have every mobius yeah. book french edition but, but, like, yeah, so i was hanging out with mobius and i'm like all right that's already a great start to a story <laughs> and then L libertor wanted to kind of be an actor because he's a funny guy. But there's an actual Italian actor named Aldo Maccioni. And he's a dead ringer for Liberatore. So he could never get any traction because people, if he's walking down the street in Italy, people go, hey, Aldo. <laughs> <laughs> Even in France, like I remember I've seen the movies with this guy. Oh my God, he looks just like Liberatore. He's kind of a goofy character, but uh, yeah. It doesn't make sense to me how Libertor is so good because it sounds like he's got he's social. He's going out. He has aspirations yeah. to do things besides sitting at the drawing table. How yeah. did he get so good? Yeah. When did he put the time I, in? Probably really I, fast. He, he, there was a, there, there, no. Well, was he was he, he was he a fat kid? <laughs> something. I, I don't know. I don't I don't think so. He came from a small village. 
That was going to be the other guess. Is like he grew up completely isolated. There was nothing yeah. else to do but yeah. become a master artist. Because well, that's a Jim he... Rugg thing. You see this handsome face right here, man. <laughs> that dude could have been getting all the pussy one of this shit. But, uh, you know, he got drawn skills. It's a well, rural he, shit. Well, he, 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 he was working with markers. And in order to blend them, he would use his fingers. And he rubbed them so much that he'd like rub the fingerprints off his hands. And it wasn't until they got him to come to Paris because he got a deal with this album, Michelle, and someone gave him an electric eraser and it changed his life. He was like, oh my God, <laughs> you know, you're going to have to, because, you know, his, his fingers were, but he, you know, and then he got, you know, he, he was never like movie stars. I mean, he's won the, the equivalent of the, the Oscars for, he designed the costumes for one of the, uh, I think it's Asterix and Cleopatra. Mm. And he designed the costumes and he won the French, it's called the César. He won the César for Asterix and Caesar. There you go. And, and, but he would like, I remember he was, he worked on, he was, they had him doing some stuff for Ghostbusters too. And by the time he actually sent him a drawing, the film was already well into production. <laughs> and like, yeah. I've got a set of, I've got a set of Olympic posters. They had the Olympics here at one point and they had him do, um, posters for each one of the uh the the, the uh, events and i think they they weren't even ready for the olympics <laughs> that's incredible and there was, there, there's a there, he, he was asked to do a, an album cover it was for 45 for this singer called dick rivers who was sort of like a, a uh a johnny great. cash elvis presley knockoff guy and the guy, it took him longer to do the art for that for that forty five cover than it did the guy record like a whole. Like, it took him a year to get it done because <laughs> he just never. He's he'd sign he would sign contracts with various. He get an advance and then you know, it, it'd never get done. I mean, Ranch Rocks. There was a whole other book that just never got finished. And what? Got, they, they keep giving him advances, and I remember him telling me like, and it would always get. Um, option for the films and uh and he said and they, they'd never get made and he goes i keep thinking i just hope they never make it because you just enjoy getting the option money that's a real thing you know when like harv's uh american splendor stuff was was optioned for 25 or 30 years and it would be a, like a reliable extra 100k a year for wow. for for 30 years and then i think it was the same amount of money when they made the movie and he got you know, satellite stuff just from more book deals and selling more books and things like that. But, you know, after that flick was made, the, the money tap was off. Hey, yeah. Jeff, Jeff, uh, there was some news recently, man. You you got like an art dealer or something, and uh, there's the new Shaolin Cowboy. Tell the people what, what's uh, on the horizon. Uh, well, in, I think in September, Dark Horse is putting out the, uh, the Cruel to be Kin book that I did. It's full color. I mean, well, it's, but no word balloons in it. So it's a completely uh, wordless wow. comic. And it's the Shaolin Cowboy Cruel to Begin Silent but Deadly Edition. <laughs> and, uh, which I thought was, it's, That's it's, awesome. I can't wait for that. So but that, and it's an oversized because in Italy they did it. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big book. It'll be a big size. And then I think next March, then there's going to be the, what they call a gallery edition of uh, <laughs> Cruel to be Kim, but it's just all the it's in pencil. They're just oh, gonna be in shit, pencil. Dude. So you'll see all these goofy uh, there's probably oh, like a printing method, like technology is probably so advanced now. There's probably a printing method where they could create the grooves for the pencil. <laughs> <laughs> right. And be like, oh it's shit, like, he pressed it's, hard. It's it's like I mean, especially the older stuff, because I'm drawn on for my eyes, I'm drawing on thinner paper. So the, the groove is still there, but like the older stuff, which is on two ply, is like, you know, like braille. You can just run your hand across it. And... You know it's what, amazing. Jeff? When, when we were in doing that one art show in uh, in uh, Tokyo, there was that, the dude who, Yoshi, the guy who ran this, the joint, mm -hmm. he um, he had a piece of um, From Hell artwork. He had the last the last drawing uh, from, 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 uh, from uh, excuse me, from Hard Boiled. And it was on that like vellumy plastic. Yeah, what yeah, is that yeah. shit, man? Well, that was because when Mobius, because uh, I would like, I'd ink on a light box and I'd ink on almost like a one ply kind of layout paper, what we used to call layout paper that you'd use in advertising. And they'd do marker renderings on them for storyboards and shit. 
But when we did City of Fire, and he had got these drawings, and they're you know they're on this two ply with the engraving, he couldn't ink on those things because once again, because that groove, if you want to change it, your pen can't. It's stuck in that trench that I've, I've dug, and so he inked those on a light box, and he came up. He had this paper, and it's not exactly vellum. It's a thing called Opalux, O P A L U X, and you can find it in the states, and it's kind of plastic and paper and it has a tooth to it and it was really great stuff because you can go with a razor blade and you know like fix the line if you want and scratch it out completely and um uh, there's no white out I don't, I don't know how white out would work on it but never, and neither did he but he he did them all on that and so i started using it because i go wow this is better than this you know because i it was easier on my eyes uh, too and so I, but i stopped using it just because it's a kind of stuff it's really good but you would you wouldn't want to leave it in the sun because I, <laughs> I i traded i gave it an original to, to frank uh, and i'd go over to his <laughs> his office and uh he had it sitting rolled up in a in a window and every time i went out there it was getting yellower and yellower and it gets brittle and uh, and into like a shrinky you know, thing. That thing is that thing is probably you know like powder now. Oh wow! But because he you know he just you know it's his he can do whatever he wants or what he wanted to do with it. And I actually left some art with it and with him and he took the top off it. The tops of the the, the pages all this this Opalux artwork was a little yellow because the sun had been had been hitting it. Yeah, I thought I seen it all, man, and but I never saw that that kind of paper before. It's really good. It's really good stuff. And uh, I mean, for that. And the other thing is because on, on actual mylar, you got to be really careful because it'll smear. And this stuff doesn't smear if you touch it. The only problem with it is, is if you you leave your hand on there too much, it'll leave, you know, a little bit of oil. And when you go to ink, you won't get a real dark line. You'll have to go over it again because it'll come out a little gray. Mm. Well, none of that will be a problem when you start your watercolors and your spray painting career. Well, maybe I'll do it. Sitting right next to Howard Stern and Joe Rogan while he's doing now, it. I'm going to be interested in doing the, the spray paint thing. I, I think you would like that. I like, I like I like drawing with a Sharpie. Just Sharpie, like you put your pen to yeah. the paper and just one line, you don't, you know. Well, the no Shaolin Cowboy is whispering into my ear and he's telling me he's got the answer. It's like, if we do something, it would have to be not your normal drawing pen. It would have to be a Sharpie or like a big fat black crayon or something like that. And it, it would have to be a, we would have to finish the comic in one day. It would have to be a one day. So whatever. And it'd have to be what, at least 30, 40 pages. So oh, you got God. pretty that, That's a 24 hour comic. You know, there, yeah. there's, there's a parameter set up for that. Yeah. Let's get on that. Well, it could be, yeah, a, it would be amazing. Be... The story, everything has to be created within the day. That's part of the rules. Yeah, that's part of the rules. No preconceived notions. Yeah. But there's there's a uh, there's other like vestigial parts to it. There's the Kevin Eastman method, which is once you get started, you have to like make 24 pages, even if it's beyond 24 hours. And then uh, what mm -hmm. were some of the other weird uh, rules? Neil Gaiman's, I think, wasn't 24 pages. Right. I think you have his, to, his you, fell short. Yeah. You have 24 hours and then uh, just whatever you get done in the 24 hours is what you do. Yeah. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. a good move. I like complete story within 24 hours. Sure. Like that. Yeah. Get on it, fellas. <laughs> Thank you guys so I'm, much I'm for coming just, through, man. I, I feel like it can't get any darker. I feel like it can't get any darker where Uncle Jeff lives, man. So it might be past his bedtime. <laughs> no, I just don't have the... I mean, it's what, it's like 8.30 here. So. Awesome. Thank Thanks, you, guys. Thank you guys so much yeah, for coming thank through. You. Thank yeah, you. It was sure. a pleasure. I'm, I wish Jim had spoken more <laughs> i always think that <laughs> but he's got that beautiful smile yep. jeff you never you never are bothering me when you call me just i want to put it on the record and or, or you, you guys me but, but i love you i love you brother K Fabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell so that we can notify you when new videos are available. We are on the road to 100,000 subscribers. Thank you very much. And if you get anything out of these videos, if you dig what we produce, make sure that you follow the channel and uh, it helps us out a lot to, uh, to have a good subscriber base.
The videos are ultimately brought to you by the books that we make, but we have a Patreon, and the Patreon is there for you to mitigate the kayfabe effect, become one of our biggest supporters, and you get all the videos before anybody else. You also uh, have access to the live stream recording session as we produce these videos. Link in the description below for uh, the, the Patreon. We have more than 1,700 videos out there, and we might have talked about some of your favorite comics. So make sure you hit the magnifying glass on the front page of the Kayfabe YouTube channel. Check out the channel. Pop in your favorite titles. Check out those episodes. If we haven't talked about your favorite comics, then by all means, put something in the comments so that we can push those books a little bit higher on our uh, to-read piles. Ultimately, the videos are brought to you by the books that we make. Right now, I've been working on Switchblade Shorties, which is my daily comic strip. You can find it on all of our social media platforms, the Kayfabe stuff, uh, my own personal uh, social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram. There's a dedicated Switchblade Shorties Instagram, and it's also uh, on Webtoon in its uh, full archive. The Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus is uh, is going quick, and uh, it is 45 bucks on Amazon at the moment. Uh, so scoop it up if you haven't. Uh, it's almost freaking half off, so you can't beat that with a stick. Best book I made to date. X-Men Grand Design Trilogy Trade Paperback. Contains all of my X-Men Grand Design works. Uh, it's the one place where you can get it all inside of one handy dandy cover. Red Room Crypto Killers is coming out at the end of February. Part of a trilogy of trade paperbacks. Uh, but you don't need to start with the first one. Because each contains four self-contained stories. So if you grab this first, Crypto Killers, then uh, at a later time you could read the Anti-Social Network or Trigger Warnings. Jimmy, why don't you let the people know what's out there? I have Street Angel, Deadly Squirrel Live, and Street Angel, Princess of Poverty, both available right now from Image Comics. These are also self-contained. Totally, one is black and white, one is full color. Uh, the Homeless Ninja on a Skateboard, perfect for the action comics or superhero comics fan in your life. The big news for me is the self-published comics, True Crime Funnies, the 1986 zine, and the BW zine, celebrating the 80s black and white explosion. These are self-published. You can get them on my website, jimrug.com, or my Patreon, patreon.com slash jimrug. They've been out of print and unavailable. They will be back and available March 6th. So if you miss those, March 6th, you can pick those up. And Hulk Grand Design. This is a treasury-sized edition out of print. However, the trade paperback coming out in May this year, and that is available now for pre-order. So let Marvel know they need to keep these things in print by pre-ordering that one wherever you pre-order books. The books are the most important way to kind of keep things uh, on, on, the, on the tracks. But there are some direct ways to support Cartoonist Kayfabe. Jimmy, let the people know. Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can also pick up Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts, merchandise, hats, stickers, and more at our spread shop. That link is also under this video. There you have it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, support the channel, keep the vids rocking. Jimmy, give them final marching orders, and we'll be on our way. Read more comics.